Hi there, it's Kathy Chenna with Tri-Cities Community TV, and we are at the Coquitlam Public Library, located on the unceded territory of the Coquitlam Nation's people. Today with me is Armin Bra, and he is the president of the Warriors Minor Ball Hockey Association. And I guess we're going to talk about all things to do with ball hockey. Um, in my very limited research, I've heard that it's quite an uh, upcoming sport, almost as good as like hockey hockey. So maybe you can share with us what is ball hockey? Uh, so it's, it's basically hockey without the ice. Um, so no skates. Um, everything else is really similar in terms of ice hockey and ball hockey. Um, no ice, obviously, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's definitely growing. Uh, we've been able to double the numbers in the last couple of years, so we're, we're close to about 600 kids for this past season. Um, we, uh, we started a girls' program uh, two years ago, um, so I was kind of scared whether we'd have a team, but uh, we ended up with five this year. So Five teams? Yeah, five oh, girls' wow. teams, so That's it's, it's been, re been really good, yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you say without the ice, but obviously there's no puck, right? Is it an no. actual ball that bounces? Uh, it's, it's a ball hockey ball, so like a street, uh, what you would use for... Like a a, bigger than a golf ball? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. Yeah. okay. Sim similar size to a tennis ball. Similar yeah. size to a tennis ball. So yeah. you're co-ed now, Yep. right? And uh, earlier we were talking about, um, you know, what grade levels, age groups, is it adults, is it just kids? Tell me a little bit about that. Why would someone be interested in ball hockey? I mean, um, there's a lot of reasons. I mean, one is, you know, if some kids aren't comfortable with ice hockey, this is a great avenue for them. Um, other is usually it's uh, ball hockey is played in the off season of ice hockey. So okay. um, the kids that are, you know, even at a high level of ice hockey, they love to play ball hockey because, you know, they're able to work on their stick skills mm -hmm. and um, just still kind of engage in the game while not being on the ice. Right. Um, in terms of the age groups where we start at U7, so that's our, uh, you know, little guys, tykes. Um, they, you know, do more development and sort of learning the game. And then it goes all the way up to U21. Um, so it's a, um, you know, pretty big uh, age group there, four, 14 divisions, I believe. Where do the kids play out of? Uh, so we're all throughout the Tri-Cities. Uh, we're at Port Coquitlam Community Center, um, Poirier, the Poirier Forum, and Port Moody Rec. Oh wow, it, yeah. it, it's that's that's a lot of like yeah, things to manage yeah. and oversee. And yeah. you said you're at about 600 students now. Uh, 600 kids. Yeah, we uh, we a uh, couple years ago before I started, we were about two f 230. Um, so we we doubled it last year, and then we added another about 100 to 150 this year. So mm -hmm. it's been good. So is it yeah. just do you think word of mouth? Like how do you guys do your marketing? What 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 yeah. is it really that has attributed to the success? Um, I mean, I think we one we kind of modernized a little bit. You know, got on social media, started spreading the word that way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I talked to the, a lot of the other associations, whether it was ice hockey, um, you know, soccer, and just reached out to the other presidents in the area and you know a lot of them were willing to work together and, and kind of spread the word for us so that right. that was really good yeah. and um, when we talk about ice hockey versus a ball hockey we know that ice hockey is expensive like yeah. the equipment the right. ice time the early mornings yeah. like the cost to parents and not to mention the investment of time yeah how does ball hockey differ from from that is it quite expensive as well uh, no not at all I mean so it's, it's probably similar to say soccer okay. or uh, lacrosse um, you know our, our association fees are about depending on the age uh, you know anywhere from a hundred dollars to about 350 mm -hmm. um, depending on the age group um, and then your equipment, you know, you need a stick, uh, helmet, gloves, and shin pads. So, um, you know, not as much equipment mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh, no early mornings so far. No so, early mornings, yeah. that's good. Yeah. Now, we talked about the 600 kids that have enrolled. Yeah. What would you say your sweet spot in terms of like, sure, there's the under, you know, seven year olds, right? But yeah. are, is it the 10 to 12 year olds? Is it more the sort of, you know, 14 to 16? Where's your, where's your, the bulk of your, of your yeah. clients coming from? Um, it's, you, you know what, uh, we've been pretty fortunate because it's spread, spread out pretty well. Um, you know, with the older age groups, uh, U20, U21, it does tend to um, trend downward a little bit, you right. know, because kids grow up and they got jobs and all that right. kind of stuff. Right, yeah, school, and, yeah, and, and High, higher level schooling, yeah. 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 And then, uh, you know, our, our U11 group this year, so uh, 10 and nine year olds, we, we had six teams in that age group. So mm. um, it's, it's all ranges from probably about three to six teams per division. Mm -hmm. um, 
So how, how are the logistics managed in something that's this size, like with three different rec centers in three different yeah. cities? You know, what? who does all of that sort of time? You know, like like today we're in a space that obviously needs to be rented. And, yeah. you know, when you're at the uh, Porco Quotlum um, rec center and the other rec centers, yep. there's space like do you just like allocate time. Do you, how does that all work? Cause it seems yeah. like it's a, a, quite a daunting task. It, it, it is. It is a big task. So, um, you know, it's. I guess the growth has sort of been hard because you know you don't. We've had our sort of core two or three people doing everything, mm -hmm. um, but with the growth, you kind of looking for more people to step up. So that that's probably one of the biggest struggles is just trying to get people to help and, and join the, the board or um, you know just join the association to help out. Um, but right now it's, you know, it's probably a few people that are, are sort of managing everything mm -hmm. that we're doing. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So it's uh, primarily volunteer yeah. based? Yeah, it's all volunteer mm -hmm. based. So, so tell me about the infrastructure with the volunteers. You're the president yep. and then you have a board of directors That's and right. you have a secretary. So just yep. walk me through that. Yeah, so we have, we have a, uh, you know, I'm the president, so we have a board of five. Um, and then we have, um, you know, volunteers for coaches, obviously, team managers. Um, you know, uh, evaluation coordinators, um, team manager, coordinator. Um, so we have a few coordinators that help out, um, but it, it, it is, you know, for being a volunteer-based uh, mm, situation. So no, no one's paid to that no, organization at no, all. No. It's just pure for the love of their children yeah. and what yeah. they're doing. Do you have kids that play? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I was yeah, going to say, you yeah. couldn't just be doing this one day, you decided no, that it's going to be the president of this organization <laughs> without children. Yeah it's, it's, yeah, it's a lot of work for, for one person. So, you know, the more people that can help, it, mm. it definitely, you know, makes things easier. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So why do you think that um, ball hockey has gotten to be so popular? Um, you know, it's it's definitely a small sport in terms of you know ice hockey and soccer, but uh, it's it's growing. And you know, we the kids now have opportunities to play in worlds. Like we we sent two kids from the Tri Cities to play um, in Slovakia, and that team won gold. So um, that was pretty cool. But uh, yeah, you know, to get chances to play in the nationals, uh, you know, the end goal is for ball hockey to hopefully get into the Olympics one day. Mm -hmm. um, but you know it. It's, it's grown up as a small sport, so it's, it's about getting organized and just trying to, you know, get the, the sport at that level, um, baby steps, I guess, right? So there are other ball hockey associations in the other cities? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah and they're yeah. quite large, too. Yeah, they're yeah. also trending on, on, a, on a good growth pattern. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're, we're probably in the middle of the pack. Um, you know, there's associations in uh, Surrey, uh, Langley, and they they are larger than us. But, uh, mm. you know, we're definitely making the name out here. So. Well, I mean, the metropolis area yeah. covers so much more, right? That's right, like, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So um, one of the questions I was going to ask you is, you know, where does ball hockey get you, like, yeah. as a... As a as a person, as, a, yeah. as someone that's in it, you said you you sent some kids to Worlds this year. Yeah. Um, what what other kinds of things can kids you know aspire to become when they're playing ball hockey? Would you say? Yeah, I mean that that part of it is still a work in progress. You know, a lot of the kids and families that are involved, it's, it's for the love of the game at this point. Mm -hmm. um, but the goal is to eventually get it as an Olympic sport, and you know, hopefully introduce it to schools and stuff like that. So. And so with your um, organization, like the U7, and, you know, we talked about the other, um, what was it, U11? Yeah, U11. Right. Yeah. So, for example, are these kids all beginners that come in? Um, or do they have experience? Where are they getting it from? Yeah, the, the spectrum's pretty large. So, um, you know, you got U7, U11, which is all sort of one level. And then when we move into the U13 age group, uh, we tier it. So we have a tier one mm -hmm. and then a tier two. So, you know, the beginners would play tier two and then more of your rep kids and um, you know div one soccer div two soccer kids mm -hmm. would play tier one mm -hmm. and yeah. is this uh, similar to the sports that are popular where kids would need to try out for these different yep. tiers would you say yeah mm -hmm. yes and, w and what is the w what's the um not the timeline but the the season you said yeah. it's opposite of ice hockey so right. what, what is the season for ball hockey yeah our, our season's not super long um, but as soon as the ice is out at the rec centers um, you know usually uh, mid-March mm -hmm. is when we start our evaluations and we run till the end of June so um, you know this season we just uh, we, we were fortunate and had a lot of workload but we hosted the provincials in the Tri-Cities um, so we had um, you know over a hundred teams over 2,000 kids playing um, from was, British Columbia yeah yeah, yeah. 200 teams you said uh, over a hundred teams and teams. over 2,000 kids so oh my yeah, gosh yeah it was, wow. a, it was a lot and where did you do this 
Uh, so we use the seven ranks. Um, so oh, Poco, right. yeah, yeah, Coquitlam, yeah. and uh, Port Moody. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. That's, uh, that's pretty incredible. And then all these people have to come down and find places to yeah. stay. And yeah. always mayhem, mayhem. Yeah. So um, why are you doing this? <laughs> it seems like it's a lot of work. It, it, are your kids still little? Uh, yeah, they are. So they, they are. have a lot of years left. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully they might not like the sport next year. No, well, I'm joking. No. I'm joking. <laughs> but the thing is, like, what's your role really as president? Are you like overseeing things? Like, I've been a president for various organizations, and I just delegate to my vice president. That's what a good president yeah. does. But I feel like you're a bit more hands-on. <laughs> so, because you sort of have to be, I yeah. think, with maybe not as many volunteers. Right. And, so tell me a little bit about your role. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I got involved for you know, obviously, number one, my kids, mm -hmm. um, and then two, just I, I just wanted to help the sport grow and. You know, ball hockey is small, um, but we've made a lot of strides over the last few years just trying to make it bigger. Um, you know, I got, I don't know how, I got involved in um, BC ball hockey as well. So, you know, even at a provincial and national level, we're just trying to make the sport better and, and just more organized mm -hmm. in general. Mm -hmm. But but again, like, I don't know necessarily if a person would think like, oh, let's put our kids in ball hockey. Yeah. You know, like there's t-ball and yeah. softball and baseball and soccer and there's normal hockey there can be track and field there's like all these different right. things right. like why ball hockey like what was it about did you play as a young child yeah i played um not uh you know we, we moved from england so we didn't have ball hockey out there but uh once once we were here we were playing ball hockey or street hockey so is yeah. it something i i was reading recently and you know please forgive me if i'm wrong but is it a a big southeast asian sport um i mean it it is big in that community. Yes. Um, you know, we, you know, South Asians definitely love the sport. Yeah. Um, but, you know, if, if you even look at our, our national team, right, um, it, it was majority Caucasian, but there was, you know, maybe a handful of other. Kids um, are coming from all yeah, different yeah, diverse it's, it's, it's all over the place. Things, it kind of, so. you know, obviously it depends on the cities. You mm -hmm. know, if, if you're in Surrey, mm -hmm. this is a majority of South Asians right, of playing. Course, of course. Um, but, yeah, it's all over the place. Our, um, I, I run a, an education facility and sometimes when kids come to us and they can't afford yep. um, what well, we're uh, teaching them, um, we give out bursaries or financial right. aid. Um, right. Is there something like that, a component where you help kids? You know, like our motto would be like, any child that comes to our doors, yeah. yep. we'd like to say yes to them, right? What, what about you guys? What do you do? Yeah, so, you know, the last few years we've been fortunate to be part of uh, Kids for Sport. Um, mm -hmm. So they, oh, right. they uh, nice. you know, they help with financial aid and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, we, we do our best to try to engage as many kids as possible. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, the the last couple of years we've had a try ball hockey event just for people to kind of come and try it for an hour and see whether they like it yeah, or not. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, it's it, the response has been good. Yeah. So of course you can't really run an organization like this without funding. Yeah. So is that just based on a lot of sponsors that you guys, you know, try to go out in the community and actively recruit or, or do you get funding from the government or how does that work? Um, you know, we were able to apply for grants or whatnot. Um, you know, there, there is not a lot of sponsorship dollars out there right now, um, especially given the way the market is and everything. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I mean, that is sort of just working within a budget you have as well, right? So mm -hmm. um, we, you know, we have our registration fees that fund the majority of the sport. Um, right. You know, we're not obviously looking to turn a profit here, but uh, um, just grow the sport and, and, and make sure it, everyone's having fun. So you said that it started in March and it goes till June. Uh, so our, our season, uh, the provincials end, you know, usually around uh, Canada Day long weekend. Okay. Um, but then in July and even into August, uh, you have uh, Western Championships, Nationals, and then Worlds. So it, it you could technically go into mid-August. If, if kids are still involved yeah, in that yeah, and they're yeah. doing all of that, then they will. Yeah. But right now we could say you're a little bit in the off season. Right, right. right you're in the yeah. off season. And so when does uh, registration start up for kids? How can they find out more information? Like just share all that with us. Yeah, yeah. So we were uh, actually in the process of uh, looking into a fall season to see if, um, you know, because there, there's dry floor available at uh, the Poirier Forum. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that may be something new, but usually our registration would open um, early fall mm -hmm. um, so October November um, and then uh, you just go to our website um, tcmbha.com mm -hmm. and you can register there so yeah. okay and 
Just going back to the logistic of the sport itself. So yeah. really, it's it's two nets, two teams on opposite sides. Yeah. Get the ball in the net, you score. Yeah. Yeah. There's offsides. It's very That's similar right. to the hockey. Again, just yeah. no ice and a little bit of a different ball. That's right. Right. But otherwise, yeah. everything, all the rules are similar to you. Yeah. Uh, the the only real difference is um, there's a floating blue line in ball hockey. Um, but other than that, um, you know, the rules, um, penalties, all that is is very similar. What is a floating blue line? So um, once you cross the blue line. Um, the, the line now shifts to the center. So you okay. have that the entire zone to play okay. offensive. Yeah. Okay, got yeah. it. And what else would you like our uh, our uh, viewers to know about the sport? Um, just come try it. Um, you know, it's it's a great sport. Um, you know, it's it's been growing and our, our teams are getting bigger. Um, just even provincially, like the, the sport is really getting organized now. So mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. And how old is your youngest uh, uh, um, Participant. Uh, the youngest five? participant would be five. Yeah, five. that's right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'd be worried about them getting hurt. <laughs> yeah, it's. I mean, it's. It's usually you know them trying to figure out what's going on, but uh, it's. It's fun. It's you know there's a big difference from when they start the season in March yeah, all the way till June. So, yeah. yeah, and you get gratification from that growth, yeah. right? So yeah. I think for you, I mean, at, at this point, being the president and such, although your children are in it. I think you're also like seeing the sport grow. You're seeing how kids are growing as well within that sport. Like little Johnny, who was five, who's now nine, That's right. is now scoring three goals in a game, which is amazing. Before he didn't even know what net to throw it in, right? That's right. So, That's right. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it, it yeah. is. It is. It's yeah. very similar to the young kids playing soccer. They don't know there's that yeah. whole huddle of them running yeah. in one direction. You know, the little Tim Hortons yeah. huddle of kids. So. Yeah, it's um, true. So I, I think that's great. It's it's a, it's a different and new sport. I'm I'm glad that you reached out. And uh, today we're talking to Amin Bra, and he is the president of the Warriors Minor Ball Hockey Association. If you're interested in allowing your child to play, um, he promises that uh, they won't get hurt. But uh, even as young as five years old and all the way up to 21, please check them out on their website uh, below. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Kathy Chenna.